Welcome to my book, and I'm going to be taking you through the Cyber Defenders Splunk Boss of the Sock series version one. Let's get into it. Welcome everyone. So let's take a look at the Boss of the Sock and what exactly that is. So if you don't know, it's a fantastic challenge set available in Cyber Defenders and it actually comes in three different versions. So if we just jump over to the main page here and search up a boss of the sock, we'll see that we have version three, two, and one. And this is gonna be dealing with threat hunting primarily as the goal of the lab here. So the way to get your Splunk instance working, if you've never set anything up like this before, just follow the instructions. You just download the VM, you start the VM, and you simply access it to your computer through the browser. It's a five gig file, nothing too crazy here. There's 32 questions total. So in this series, we're gonna be going over all these questions and solving them together. So that means I'm not gonna be solving them ahead of a time and then just showing you how I did it. We're going to walk through one question at a time. Taking a look at the challenge details, we actually have two scenarios here. So the first part of the 32 questions here is going to be focusing on an APT scenario where you were hired to protect and defend Wayne Enterprises and somebody defaced the Wayne Enterprises website here. And it's your job to investigate the defacement and how that happened while working with the Lockheed Martin kill chain stop model. And if you don't know what that is, I have it over here. It's a cyber kill chain. And this is just suggesting that the so-called attackers in this case used this to guide them through the process to conduct their attack. And you can really dive into this and look at the more advanced and complex versions, but this is just the basic version, right? So you have reconnaissance, moves over to weaponization, delivery, exploitation, installation, command and control, actions, and objectives. We're not going to dwell on this, though. We are going to dwell on the second part of this scenario, which is to do with ransomware. And this is about one of the users being greeted by ransomware. And we have to investigate the ransomware and reconstruct it. The attack just to learn how it happened. All right, taking a look at the setup guide, you'll have everything you need here. You can even watch this wonderful video they've prepared to help you through, which is fantastic. So jumping over to the challenge questions here, we're just going to get right in here. I've already got Splunk fired up. And you can see here that we have our main index in Splunk. So if this was an enterprise scene, we, we might have more than one indexes to search, but in this case, we just have the one indexy, and I believe the name on that is, uh, I think it's, actually don't know what it is. But that's okay, because I believe we just have one index. So let's just start off with the first question, which reads, this is a simple question to get you familiar submitting answers. What is the name of the company that makes the software that you are using for this competition just a six letter word, no punctuation. All right, well, we better go take a look at Splunk here before we pop that in as our answer. And if you don't know, Splunk is a very powerful seam tool that's often used for not only log aggregation, but for security analysts to perform threat hunting. It's a fantastic tool. It's one of the biggest. I use it every year at KringleCon. I've used this in other roles and positions and other CTFs. Definitely re recommend checking it out. If you've never used it, there's free trials, or you can go to other sites like Try Hack Me where you can learn about Splunk from the ground level and work your way up to be a little more proficient. So let's go ahead and enter Splunk here for our first challenge, and hopefully this works. Wonderful. So our second question reads, what is the likely IP address of someone from the Poison IB group scanning I'm really not Batman dot com for web application vulnerabilities. What we'll do is just copy this and pop it into Splunk here. And you can see we immediately have a result here. The very first thing that comes up reads interesting. Um, it reads that Oh, here we go. So, sorry, the first request here reads to an internal IP address. There's a post request to Joomla, which is, uh, I've dealt with Joomla before. I'm just gonna look it up quickly. 
it's a web development design. Okay, so yeah, it's a web, it's a web content management system. Okay. So knowing this, we can see that the request came over port 80 from this IP address here to, I'm not really the Batman, but there's nothing much else in here. It was just a simple post request. So let's look at the second event here. And the second event is much busier. It's showing us the packet information, the destination contents, which is a search phrase, which is interesting. And the destination is a post to Joomla under component search. Okay. What we need to figure out is what IP is doing the scanning here. So we see our destination IP. That's an internal IP again. And how many IPs are on here? I'm just curious. So let's take a look. So hosts in this data set we have. No, that's not what I'm thinking of. Client IP. So we have two client IPs. Okay, and then how many? I'm assuming we just have the one internal host. Although there is that scenario too with the user's computer. So it would be helpful if we could visualize this data, but I don't want to build visuals for this right now. It would make things much easier. Let's take a look at the destination IP. So we only see the one internal IP. Let's take a look at the source IP. And again, just this one internal IP and this other IP with 403 counts. And what did the question see? The question said, what is the IP? Okay, so who's scanning? I'm not really Batman. So we only have a few IP address here. Let's see, is there a header that says what's going on here? So site, I'm not really Batman. Nothing much on the source headers. Let's take a look again. What's our user agent? So Mozilla, Apple WebKit, Chrome, and then an AccuNetics product. AccuNetics web vulnerability scanner. Third party scanning prohibited. So that's interesting. Let's take a quick look at the web, the AccuNetics web scanner vulnerability. That is going to indeed be the answer, I can only assume. I have heard of AccuNetics, never used it though. Looks pretty cool. Why AccuNex? Interesting, let's not dwell on that. Let's see if this is indeed our answer, AccuNetics. Oh no, we need the IP address. So this is definitely our individual and their IP address was the client IP address is this here. So let's copy 4080. 148.22, hopefully this is it. Yep, looks like that was it. Moving on to question three here, which reads, what company created the web vulnerability? So we already know it's AccuNetics. And there we go, we have that answer. What content management system is I'm really not Batman.com using? Please don't include punctuation. Not sure why we would use punctuation. That makes me think the content management system is not Joomla. It is Joomla, which makes sense, but I'm not sure why there'd be. Anyways, that's weird. Okay, what is the name of the field that defaced the I'm not really Batman.com website? Please submit only the name of the file with the extension. What's the name of the file? Uh, so. I guess we're looking for this file here. We can't just click it and find out here, can we? Bottom left, defacement.png. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, this is gonna be tricky. So we know then that, I think what's being suggested is this is the target website here, because it's the only internal IP address. So if we just search for this, and we probably wanna search for, uh, let's see, I'm thinking like URLs maybe unique. Unique, let me think, URL, no, oh, there's another way we can do this. What is this? It's Splunk, uh, Splunk stats, is it Splunk? I think it's the stats command that we can use. A stats command can be used for several SQL operations, of course, yes. Okay, well, let's, let's see, I think, cause uh, I thought we could do unique. No, we can do union. 
I'm probably just thinking of something else. A little count table. Count table uh, post, I guess. I don't know. No. All right, let's try stats. Stats count action host. That looks good. Let's do that. So we got... several things. So that's not really what we we're looking for, but we can do stats by, we do stats count, um, I guess we could do stats count by URL, but I think what we're looking for is, Let's try, where's the action? Um, count by action. Can we just do action without host? Like the action of uploading or success? So let's see, what do we have? We have one success count. Maybe this will be like success for image uploaded. No, not at all. Um, interesting. What about just action success? Yeah, what am I thinking? That doesn't make any sense at all. Let's do stats count by, I really thought action would, if we click into it, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't give us much. It just kind of says no results found. And if we go to allowed, I think that's going to give us too many. Let's see, they'll open that in a new page. Okay, so this is good, but I'm not sure if we're necessarily going to be looking for an allow response when we post a photo, but though that's proto. HTTP content type. Nothing. That's all. Let's search for just that IP and then search by HTTP content type. So HTTR stats, HTTP. P. Well, that doesn't make sense. This one's tricky. Let's do stats, HTTP content type, images, two images. Let's pivot over there. Nothing again. Okay, let's do stats by count by URL. I feel like. So that's not ideal because we have so many other stats. So we need, let's do, um, let's change this IP, you know what? Because I have a feeling we want to look for the client IP listed as, let's see, can we do that? C equals our underscore IP equals our target. And yeah, we have how many hits do we have? Okay, let's look at images again. It's not under URI. I'm just looking for content. Is it content type I'm looking for? Well, I suppose what we could do is just unique IP stats count by URL this way. I'm curious just to see by action what comes up. Otherwise, I'll search by URL, and if that doesn't work, we are going to try and drill down on content requests to see. And it looks like absolutely nothing showed up. That's odd. That, I wonder if it's the white space that I had there. It's quite odd that I just don't get any stats at all. I'm not. Let's do, let me just try the host. I don't know if that would, how would there be nothing? See the client IP. This is very interesting. So I'm kind of thinking something is wrong here with our instance. Oh. Oh, you know what? It's because we have event sampling. I see. So we're getting less results. Like if we look at these six um, actions by host, they're all loud. No, so that doesn't even make sense. Let's try. Let me just try host again. So yeah, spawn two, so let's try URL. 
And yeah, it still doesn't work. So maybe this, oh, looks like it worked. And there it is. I believe Poison Ivy is coming for you, Batman.jpg. All right. And this is, where's this prank glass in bracket? Interesting. Jumpingcrab.com, Leap Port, Leap, Poison Ivy is coming for you. Okay, well, let's try this. Let's obviously expand on, do this event. And yeah, it's our client IP and this is sending, this is doing a get request to poison. So it's doing a get request to get this file from yeah, from brain class in a back of jumping crab. All right, seems interesting enough. I think this is going to be it. And it is awesome, good stuff. Well, that's gonna be a wrap here for part one of this video. We'll be jumping in for part two here. I kinda of wanna keep these short into around 15 minutes and under, so I don't wanna go on too long. But again, these are the first five questions covered. And in the next video, we'll be doing the next handful. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe, jump in our Discord channel, and I'll see everyone in the next video.